Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to F7 webinar for September 2018 exams. I'm your trainer Hamza Abdullah. And we are going, uh, we are going to uh, have a four day session of 2.5 hours each every day. So the plan of action for these days is going to be. Uh, let me share you. <clears throat> So basically we are going to have a four day session. In day number one, we are going to solve final accounts questions. In day two, we will be solving consolidation questions. In day three, we will be solving ratio analysis these are basically the areas which are normally examined in section c and in day four we'll be solving cash flow statements so this is a four day agenda that we'll be covering uh, in this webinar and as the main focus is the objective of this webinar is to guide students the exam approach that uh, that they should be following and how should they they be attempting specifically section C because that is a constructed response questions where you will be solving some Excel questions, some uh, 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 word questions. So understanding and applying that in in, uh, in the exam is is a key area that uh, that the student requires guidance in. So we'll be following these steps uh, during the webinar. Meanwhile, if you have any suggestions, you can put it on. Uh, uh, there's an option of the questions. Uh, on your screen so if you post anything over there i will be able to see your questions and i will be able to answer those as well so if there's any suggestion you people can post it over there and even if during the session if you have any question you can still post it over there So we will be solving the questions on one of the real exam environment platforms available. I will be using gocbglobal.com. There are other uh, uh, platforms available as well. So you, uh, so you people can use those as well. <clears throat> so in gocbglobal.com, you have two options, either to log in or to register. Let me show you the simple procedure of getting registered as well. If I click on the button register, it will take me to a form where I can create a new account. It is a free account basically. So I can write a username over here. Let's suppose I'm using a student to add the rate. Zabdulak.com. You can use any of the usernames. So if you simply fill out the form and click on the register button, you, it will take you to the free material available on the platform. So there is F5, 7, 8 and 9 free material, but I've created one of my papers, F7 Financial Reporting Webinar 2018. So you people can access this. I will be uploading all of the questions over here so that we can solve in uh, during the session as well as during uh, later time when you people are solving this at your home. So in, in day one, we'll be solving final accounts. We have three questions, Clarion, Moss, and Nextel. In day two, we'll be solving consolidation, day three ratios, and day four, statement of cash flow. So I will be uploading these two questions later uh, by, by Tuesday night or maybe Monday, uh, Wednesday morning. So meanwhile, we'll be solving these three questions in today's session. Let me give you a brief overview of the topic of final accounts that normally comes in the exams. So, <clears throat> So 
so when we talk about final accounts basically this is a type of a area where the examiner may give you a trial balance and students would be expected to prepare the statement of financial position the statement of comprehensive income the statement of changes in equity so these are three areas which the examiner may ask you to prepare in the exam using the trial balance and similarly there may be an incorrect financial statements prepared and the students would be expected to correct those financial statements so these are two types of uh, of questions which which can be asked in the in the topic of the final accounts so let's start the session i am solving the first question by the name of clarion if you click this this will give you some introduction about the paper the instructions and if i go further uh, there's a final message are you uh, are you sure you want to start the exam and if for example if if the the question actually uh, you are solving a question and you are unable to complete it and due to some problem you you want to continue it later your previous exam sessions will be shown over here so let's click on the start now Can you people uh, hear me properly? Can you people hear me properly? The admin is saying that this, the the volume is comparatively low. Okay, Mag is saying she can hear me properly. Alvin is saying, Ahmed is saying, all clear. Okay, thank you everyone. So let's start the question. Uh, so this is our first question by the name of Clarion. This was actually June 2015 exam question. So in the exam, you will have a slider. You, you can increase the size of the question or the answer sheet. So let's read the requirements first. The question has requirement A, B, C, D, and E. So there are five different requirements. This is a question of 30 marks in total. Uh, but in your exam, you're going to have a question of 20 marks. So, so the areas will be same, but, but comparatively, the requirements will be comparatively less. So in requirement A, the question says, prepare the statement of profit or loss for Clarion for the year ended 31st March, 2015. So we need to prepare a profit and loss first, and then we need to prepare a statement of changes in equity for Clarion for the year ended 31st March, 2015. Second area is going to be the statement of changes in equity. Third, we need to prepare the statement of financial position for Clarion, and the marks will be 10, three and 10, so total 23. So, so maybe in your exam, the, the, the examiner may eliminate 
the requirement of statement of change in equity and give you 10 and 10 marks combined uh, making a total of 20. So normally in, in, in F7 paper, you, you, you may find two questions of section C. You may find in section C, there will be total two questions. One question normally relates to the area of ratio analysis. The second question, few students are going to have a question of final accounts and few students are going to have a question of consolidation. And similarly, in, in final accounts questions, sometimes the, the examiner includes a part of cash flow statements as well. So normally in section C uh, uh, area, every question is going to have, uh, uh, every student is going to have a question of relating to ratio analysis and few students are going to have a question relating to final accounts and few question may have, few students may have consolidation. Eptisam Hanif is saying, where can I refer the question from? Eptisam, uh, I, I had already shared a PDF file with you people. Uh, you can find it in the handouts, day one final accounts. So uh, you can download the question from there. I think admin would help uh, replying you on that. Okay, so now the question has five different areas. The area D is to calculate the basic earnings per share of Clarion for the year ended 31st March 2015. So we need to prepare the PNL, the statement of change in equity, the balance sheet or the statement of financial position. And then the fourth requirement is to calculate the EPS. And in the fifth requirement, the question says prepare extracts for the statement of cash flows for Clarion for the year ended 31st March 2015. So we also need to prepare a statement of cash flows. Uh, in respect of cash flows from investing, ignoring investment income and financing activities. So we need to prepare extracts of investing and financing activities. Total four marks for that. So, so uh, in the exam, uh, the number of requirements would, uh, would be reduced, but the level of the question is going to be the same. Now let's start reading the question. The question informs us that the following trial balance relates to Clarion at 31st March 2015. You can select this and use the highlight option to highlight few of the values which are basically important in the exam. Now the question says equity shares of dollar one each. We have retain earnings on 1st April 2014. This means that the retain earnings are actually opening read and earnings. So we are going to add the profit during the year and, and uh, we will be deducting the dividend to get to the read and earnings carried down. And then we have other components of equity, which is basically share premium. And there is note one referring to that as well. And then we have 8% loan notes, uh, which means this is a financial liability. IFRS 9 is going to apply on this. Plant and equipment is at cost. This means that the plant has never been revalued previously. If the question provides you at valuation over here, this would mean that uh, that the that the uh, plant has been revalued previously. And then we have accumulated depreciation of plant and equipment. The date is again 1st April 2014 start of the year. This means that the assets have not been depreciated during the year. We have investments through profit or loss, which means financial assets again IFRS 9. And the value is of opening 1st April 2014 again. So we will be revaluing these and the changes will be taken to profit and loss because this is investments through PNL. And then we have inventory, which is closing inventory. So we need to know which values are at the start and which values are at the end so, so, so that we can deal them accordingly. Then we have receivables. The bank is on the credit side. This means the bank is basically overdraft. And then we have deferred tax. This is going to be the deferred tax liability because it is on the credit side. And most probably this will be the opening deferred tax liability and we'll be calculating the closing one in the note number six. Then we have trade payables environmental provision. This is actually IES 37. Maybe this is this may be the, the provision for dismantling which, which relates to both IES 16 and 37. And then we have finance lease obligation which is also known as lease obligation. Uh, we have revenue, cost of sales, operating lease payments, administrative expenses, distribution cost, loan note interest paid, suspense account, bank interest on the debit side. This means that this is finance cost taken to PNL. 
we have some dividends paid we have investment income and then we have some current tax on the credit side the current tax on the credit side is basically uh, some some uh, over provision relating to the last year and this is something the question is going to discuss in note number six as well so now let's start reading the question the following notes are also relevant the equity shares and the share premium balance in the trial balance above includes includes a fully subscribed one for four i right issue this means that the question has already recorded the right issue in the share capital and the premium yes uh surya naryana uh, uh, you have a long uh, a very long name you can post your quick uh, queries in this box i can read your your uh, questions over here okay so basically in the trial balance the right issue has already been included and the right issue was at 1.6 dollars per share which was made by clarion on 1st october 2014 so this is the date when when we had made the right issue and the right issue has already been recorded the market value of Clarion's shares was $2.5 on 1st October 2014. This market value is basically given to us to calculate the, the earnings per share. So this requirement, this area relates to requirement number D. Now the question is that why is the question informing us about the right issue when it has already recorded it? What is the purpose of, of uh, informing the student that this right issue has already been recorded? What the student what the examiner expects from us in this regard what do people think what is the expectation of the examiner in this what do people think what is the expectation of the examiner why is he informing us a transaction which has already been recorded Okay, for calculating EPS, what else is the potential reason of this? Anyone else? Okay, basically the question is informing us to prepare to, to, to use this adjustment in in calculating or preparing the statement of change in equity. Yes, Abid Ali, you are right. So, so the question is basically telling us so that we can prepare the statement of change in equity accordingly. So if I go on to, onto the trial balance, I can see that the equity shares are 30,000 and the share premium is actually 5,000. So let me use one note. So if we talk about the, the equity shares, the ordinary share capital of 30,000 is actually the closing share capital where we have already recorded the right issue. And somewhere during the year, we have made a right issue of one for five at $1.6 each. Similarly, the, the share premium amount is actually 5,000. So this already includes the right issue. Now, can we calculate the opening number of shares and can we calculate the new shares that have been issued during the year? Can we calculate that? Can we work back? The equity shares are of $1 each. So this means that the number of shares are also 30,000. So how can we calculate the number of shares new issued or how can we calculate the number of shares in the opening? So the treatment is pretty simple. Do look this carefully. One for five means that every shareholder who had five shares at the start of the year was given one new share during right issue. And now in the closing, he has six shares. Every shareholder who had five shares at the start of the year, we have issued one new share to that shareholder. And now he has a total of six shares. So this 30,000 is actually representing a ratio of six. So if I want to calculate the number of shares issued, the number of new shares issued, I should be dividing 30,000 by six and multiply by one to get the new shares being issued. 
if the 30,000 is the closing shares, that represents six shares every uh, that the every uh, shareholder has. And we have actually issued him one new share. So 30,000 divided by six is going to give us 5,000 new shares. So we have actually issued 5,000 new shares, which also means that we had 25,000 shares in the in, uh, at the start of the year. So opening shares were 25,000. We have issued 5,000 new and now the total is 6,000. So we can say that when we will be preparing the statement of changes in equity, we normally write the share capital, share premium, revaluation reserve, retained earnings and the total. This is a normal statement of change in equity. And we start this from the brought down and then we will be writing the shares issued during the year and the other values and then we'll be having the carried down. So when we are going to prepare the statement of change in equity, we will be writing brought down as being 25,000 and the new shares being issued as 5,000 which will make the closing balance to be 30,000. So this is actually how we are going to prepare the statement of change in equity. So the transaction that the question has given us has actually been recorded. So we do not need to re-record this, but we need to calculate the impact to be shown in the statement of changes in equity. Similarly, the share premium given to us of 5,000 is also the balance relating to the closing balance. And obviously some, some share premium would have been created when we have issued new shares. So if I want to calculate the impact of that, I'm going to say that every new share being issued is of 1.6. Let me recheck from the question as well. Every share issued was at 1.6. So 1.6 would make, let's use a calculator, 5,000 into 1.6 would give us 8,000. So this means that we have received a cash of $8,000. So the entry would be bank debit by 8,000, share capital credit by 5,000 because every share has a par value of $1. And the share premium would become of $3,000. So bank should be debited by 8,000, share capital 5,000, share premium 3,000. This means that the share premium against the new issuance was 3,000 and the opening brought down share premium was actually 5,000, uh, was actually 2,000. So this is why the question has given you uh, the, the adjustment number one, which has already been recorded. And if, if we see the, the marks of the statement of change in equity actually mainly, mainly relates to this adjustment. Are you people getting this? If you have any question, you can ask quickly so that we can continue with, with the question again. And if you people want to take a snapshot, you can take it as well. Now we have complete working on the screen. You people can take the snapshot. Mehak is saying, please repeat this again. Mehak, which area do you want to, me to repeat? Repeat the entire adjustment or the share premium or what? Ordinary share capital. Basically, Mehak, the, the question had mentioned that we have done a right issue of one for five and the shares given in the trial balance was 30,000. And the question had mentioned that the question has already recorded this right issue, which meant that the share capital and the premium given in the trial balance are actually the closing balances. So we, we wrote down the, we, we wrote down the uh, values and then we have calculated worked back that, that if this the shareholders had five shares, we have given them one, so the total is now six. So 30,000 divided by six into one gave us the value of the new shares that we have issued. And then we have multiplied it by 1.6 because we have got $1.6 per share. So the total cash that we had received was actually 8,000. So we would have debited the bank by 8,000. This is the entry which the question has already recorded we are not going to record this 
this is the impact that the question has already recorded so the bank would have been created by 8000 and the share capital will be of uh, $1 each so 5000 shares into $1 each will give us share capital of 5000 and the balancing figure is the share premium of 3000 this is how we have calculated the share premium melissa and fatma is also asking that how to calculate the premium so we have calculated 3000 premium as the difference between 8000 and the 5000 and then we have written these 5 and 3000 in the statement of changes in equity and then we have actually worked back these are the values which we haven't taken to, uh, from the trial balance this 30 and 5 and then this 5 and 3 has been taken in the new issue so i can write 1 1 so these values are taken from over there and the new issue is actually 2 and this has been taken from over here so now the brought down is the difference between the carried down and the new issue carried down minus new issue 30000 minus 5000 is the brought down similarly 5000 minus 3000 is the brought down are you people getting it mahek malisa and fatma isna is saying how to show these workings on excel i have problem in working okay isna no problem i will be doing all this working again in the excel because because there are two different objectives over here one that you people should understand that what exactly we are doing and then we will do this on the excel to, to know that how we are going to present this in the exam okay so that's good everyone is clear with this now let's go back on to the excel file and let's see how we are going to perform this in the excel so i have come down to the excel sheet what we can do is if i look at the statement of change in equity we are going to use one column for the particular share capital premium relation reserve retained earning and total so one two three four five six so we will be using actually six columns one two three four five and six so what i can do is i can actually minimize one of the columns g so that this is a type of a page break that i will be using and then we can write the double entries over here so that we are aware of what debit and credit we are going to do we'll be using four four columns for the double entries and then again we have made a page page break and then we are going to write the workings over here now in these workings if we if we write down we're going to say that the brought down value will the right issue and the carried down value so we are going to make two columns ordinary share capital and then we are going to write the share premium so the carried down was actually thirty thousand. the share premium was 5000 we can provide formatting if i select these and if i go on to this option i can find the values to be rounded off along with a comma so I, if i select this my values will be comma separated properly so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to prepare equals to or even i can write a ratio over here that every shareholder who had five shares at the start got one new now he has a total of six so if i want to calculate the right issue i'm going to press equals to thirty thousand divided by six and multiplied by one so thirty thousand divided by six into one is going to give me five thousand so now if i want to calculate the brought down so thirty thousand minus five thousand is going to be the, the brought down so now we have calculated the right issue similarly now i want to calculate the share premium so i'm going to write 5000 into 1.60 minus 5000 5000 is the number of shares into 1.6 is the cash that we have got minus 5000 will give us the premium or else you can even write write the double entry over here that we are going to debit bank we are going to credit the share capital we are going to credit the share premium so bank is equals to 5000 into 1.60 share capital is equals to 5000 into 1 and share premium is going to be the difference between 8000 and 3000 and then we can write right issue is equals to 3000 
so both the ways are correct we can write the entire form line one cell or we can write the double entry beneath the working and then calculate the share premium so again equals to 5000 minus 3000 will give us the opening brought down balances so these are the values that we will be using while preparing the statement of change in equity Sakina Batul is asking sir does this spreadsheet given in CB allows us to use shortcuts like for formatting extract I mean the way we use Excel during our work at firm no no Sakina this is the main difference between Excel and the platform which will be available uh, available in the exam for example there, there are certain shortcuts available like control C control V control X these are available but not all not all of the shortcuts are uh, are available such as Control D is not there. Control U is not there. Um, control F will be there to, to, to actually find. Control H will be there to replace. But these are all uh, areas which, which will not be which will not be actually used. Similarly, if you press Alt E S V, there's an option of paste special in the in the Excel. But all these features will not will not be there in the real exam. So I would prefer all of you to practice in the real exam environment. You can use this website. To practice in uh, according to the spreadsheet that will be available in the exam so that you so that you people are properly prepared for that even if i tell you there there may be some some problems which are not there in excel but there may be these problems in the exam like for example if i cut these values and i paste these underneath if you see all of the values are being now deleted and there's, there's an option of reference so if i control z even even in that case my all of the values are will will not be back so it is preferable not to use cut and paste in the exam it is preferable not to use cut and paste in the exam so it's better to to leave spaces so that you you can uh, write the values later on anam aslam is saying what about the other excel, excel formulas for sum or irr etc anam the formulas are all available uh, sakina was actually asking about the shortcut keys the formulas are all available you can use some you can use some if you can use the formula of irr even but you are not going to get the marks if you are using the formula of irr in your paper f9 so so you so all of the uh, all of the formulas will be there but do not use the formula of irr you can use all of the formulas but do not use the formula of irr um masam tawkir is asking the website masam the website is pretty simple go cbe global.com go cbe global.com this is the website that you can use to practice in the real exam environment you can simply go create create a new account and start practicing so let me write these values again because i have actually deleted them 1.60 and we have 5000 into 1 so now the values are back so do not use cut, cut and paste or copy and paste in the exam. Try to use other options. So adjustment number one done. Is there any confusion in this so that we can continue on to adjustment number two? Okay, so in adjustment number two, the question says that on 31st March 2015, which is the last day of the year, on this date one quarter of eight percent loan notes were redeemed at par so we have actually redeemed one quarter of the loan notes and six months outstanding loan interest was paid so actually we are doing two different work in this we are uh, we are redeeming one fourth uh, uh, of the loan notes and we are paying outstanding interest six months outstanding interest the suspense account represents the double entry corresponding to cash payment for the capital redemption and the outstanding interest so the suspense account basically represents the corresponding entry to the cash payment so now what we can do is we can write the entries that have been prepared by the by the examiner by the question so i'm writing the incorrect entry first the question has actually debited the suspense account and the question has credited the bank actually because we are repaying the loan and we are repaying the outstanding interest so let's see the amount of the suspense account it is 5800 on the debit side 
so we are going right 5800 on the debit side and obviously 5800 would be on the credit side as well now let's write the correct entry we have actually repaid the loan and we have paid the interest so six months interest should be written in the finance cost and the eight percent loan notes the the uh, the repayment of the eight percent loan note should actually decrease the loan notes so debit finance cost and debit loan notes this is the correct entry that should be recorded sorry so debit finance cost debit loan notes and the credit should be the bank so this is the correct entry the bank amount is going to be the same 5800 but now let's see what should be the amount of the loan notes and the finance cost so let's go on to the question and see the amount of loan notes the loan notes are of 20000 so we have actually paid one fourth of this so 20000 into 1 divided by 4 is going to be the quarter of the loan notes that we have actually repaid so so the amount of the loan notes uh, repaid is going to be 5000 and similarly the 6 months interest should be uh, should be 20000 into 8% this is the annual interest into 6 by 12 this is the amount this this should be the amount of the six months loan note interest so this is 800 and if we calculate the sum of the debit side this is 5800 and the credit side is also 5800 this means that we have formed the correct workings so this is what what should have been the correct entry six months interest should have been recorded in the finance cost and the one quarter of the loan notes that we have repaid should actually decrease the liability and the amount paid should be credited from the bank so now keeping in view the incorrect entry and the correct entry i'm going to write adjustment number two over here which should be the correcting entry so i'm going to debit the finance cost and i'm going to debit the loan notes and i'm going to credit the suspense account and just to make a good view it is not necessary to make a good view for the examiner there are no marks for this so finance cost is equals to 800 loan notes is equals to 5000 and the suspense account is equals to 5800 so the so the bank was actually uh, recorded correctly by the question bank debit and bank credit are the correct values so we have recorded these two debits and we have reversed this debit so that the impact of the suspense account can be eliminated okay there's a question sir i'm unable to understand the double entries is there a shortcut for me yes obviously they, there are uh, uh, a lot of shortcuts but those shortcuts will be a bit more difficult so i i usually prefer the the concept of following the double entries because even if you are working in in in, in the practical life so so you sh you will be writing the double entries in the software that you will be using or the journal entries that you will be preparing so so when when students are unable to prepare proper debits and credits this is a, this is a very big loophole in in uh, uh, in those students because if you are an accountant you should know what should be debited what should be credited because without debit credit there is no accounting and believe me if you are weak in, in if you are weak in debit and credit you can never be a good accountant so always have strong grip on the double entries because this is what makes us the accountant so we have debited finance costs we have debited loan notes and we have credited the suspense account so let me format this so that the values are good enough to be viewed So adjustment number two has been done let's move on to adjustment number three or we can um, in, in adjustment number three the question says about property plant and equipment included in property plant equipment included means that the question has already recorded something the question is informing to us included in property plant and equipment are two major items of plant acquired on 1st april 2014 so we have acquired these at the start of the year this is the date of acquisition that i'm highlighting item one had a cash cost of 14 million dollars 
However, the plant will cause environmental damage, which has to be reflect, uh, rectified when it is dismantled at the end of its five year life. So we actually need to, dis to, to incur a dismantling cost. So we have purchased the asset at a cost of 14 million and we are going to dismantle it at the end of five years life. So we have got the life as well. The present value of dismantling cost, which is discounted at 8%. So I'm highlighting the discounted as well. On 1st April 2014 of the rectification is $4 million. So $4 million is the dismantling cost. The environmental provision has been correctly accounted for. So the question has already accounted for the environmental provision. However, no finance cost has yet been charged on the provision. So this is what the question wants from us. So we should be charging 8% discount rate on the $4 million of the provision. So let me tell you the, the complete accounting that we use that we usually do in case of dismantling. Whenever the question talks about dismantling, you should remember three impacts. The first impact is that, that the dismantling cost is actually capitalized in the cost of the asset. So property plant equipment debit by 4 million and provision environmental provision credit by 4 million. So this should be the first entry. And that the second entry is to record the finance cost, which is to unwind the entry for which is finance cost debit and the provision credit, which is $4 million into 8%. And the third impact usually is to depreciate the asset, which is depreciation expense debit and the asset being credited. So in uh, uh, so whenever the question talks about dismantling, you should remember these three elements capitalizing the uh, 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 capitalizing the dismantling cost unwinding the dismantling cost and then depreciating it so this has already been done by the question the question wants to us us to calculate two impacts the unwinding and the depreciation so let me go back onto the excel file and let me write down adjustment number three over here I'm leaving this line so that the examiner knows that the working of adjustment number two is over here. Similarly, the 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 working for adjustment number one is actually over here. So we can even write adjustment number one over here so that the examiner knows that these this is the double entry. These are the workings and the double entry and the workings. It will be more easier for the examiner to understand what we are doing. So now let's write the entry as finance cost debit and environmental provision being credited so this is going to be 4000 into 8% So by 320, we are going to actually unwind the provision. So we have done this task. No finance cost had been charged for the provision. We have charged the finance cost. And let's also calculate the depreciation of this. Let me write this in the workings. So I'm going to say that we are talking about item number one. And we are calculating the depreciation. So the cost was actually 14,000. The dismantling cost is actually 4,000. So the sum of these values is going to be 18,000. Now it's better to bold the value that you have actually calculated so that the examiner knows that this is the value that, that is being calculated using a formula. So now I'm going to charge the depreciation on this. So the depreciation should be 18,000 divided by five years and if i put a minus sign over here this will automatically be shown as negative or even i can write this as positive and then when i'm calculating the net book value i can say 18000 minus 3600 is going to be the value to be taken to the balance sheet So we should be charging depreciation of 3600 and taking the net book value of 14400 
the final balance sheet so i'm writing depreciation expense debit and the property plant equipment credit so depreciation expense is going to be 3600 on on item number 1 Everything clear up till now? Any problem up till now? Now let's move on to item number two. In item two, the question says that item two was a plant acquired with a fair value of 8 million under a five year lease. Actually, the word finance is now outdated under IFR 16. So we are going to say under a five year lease. And instead of fair value, the question will, will call this present value of lease payments. So in lease, if, if you are updating the values, instead of fair value, the question will give you the present value of lease payments. So the present value of lease payments in this question is actually $8 million. So I'm highlighting 8 million. This is the present value of the lease payments. And I'm highlighting five year because this is the life. This required an initial deposit of $2.3 million. So this is the initial deposit, 2.3 million. and annual payment of 1.5 million on 31st March each year. So the annual payment is actually 1.5 million. These are the lease rentals. On 31st March each year means that we're going to pay these at the end of year. We're going to pay these amounts at the end of each year. The finance lease obligation, let's call this lease obligation. The word finance is now outdated. The lease obligation, the trial balance above represents the fair value of the plant less both the deposit and first annual payments. Now, this is this statement is a bit difficult for, for, for the students to understand that the lease obligation, the trial balance. Let's see which lease obligation the question is talking about. So this is the lease obligation. I'm again canceling the word finance from this. So the lease obligation, the trial balance is actually 4,200. So the question is telling that how we have got uh, uh, up to the amount of 4,200 is the lease obligation, the trial balance above represents the fair value of the plant, which is 8,000 less the deposit, which was 2,300 and the first annual payment, which is 1.5 million. So the question has actually used the present value of lease payments which is written as the fair value being 8000 less deposit of 2300 less first installment of 1500 so let's see if, if we are getting it right so the sum of these values is going to be 4200. So yes, this is the value given in the trial balance. So this is how the question has calculated 4200, which is actually incorrect. So we will have to correct this. And I'm writing item two over here. Now the lease has an implicit interest rate of 10%. So the implicit rate is 10%, which means the interest rate is 10%. And the asset has been correctly capitalized in the property plan equipment. So the question is actually correctly capitalized it, but the liability shown is actually incorrect. So let's see that what was the correct treatment of the liability. If, if you people would know, we, we actually prepare a lease table where we start from here. We write the broad down balance or the broad down is not necessary. We can directly write the interest rentals loan repayment and the carrot down so in year zero when we actually leased we actually started the lease the value was eight thousand 
and year in year one the interest is going to be eight thousand into ten percent so the interest should be 800 and the rentals were actually 1500 so out of 1500 800 is the interest so the difference is going to be the amount of the repayment which is actually 700 and 8000 minus 700 is going to be the carried down of the loan so at the end of the first year the liability should have been 7300 and the question has already uh, has only recorded 4200 out of that and yes apart from that we have done one mistake that in year zero we have also paid initial deposit so the deposit was of 2300 and the entire 2300 is treated as a repayment so the carried down so the loan the amount of loan was actually 5700 and then we are going to calculate the interest as 10 percent rentals as 1500 repayment as the difference between the rentals and the interest and the carried down being the difference between 5700 and 930 so this is the final amount of the loan uh, the liability that should be shown but out of 4770 we actually break this liability into further current and non-current so how can we break this up yes surya naryana uh, we, we have already deducted the initial deposit fatma is saying please repeat fatma let me show you that if i calculate year two i'm going to say the interest is going to be the 10 percent of this rentals are same 1500 repayment is 1500 minus 477 and the carried down is going to be 4770 minus 1023 so what actually happens is this year one is the year for which we are preparing the financials so the interest that should be recorded is going to be 570 for year one and the liability should be 4770 but out of 4770 1023 is the amount that is going to be paid in the in uh, in the next year so we call this a current liability and the non-current liability is going to be 3747 so this is actually the breakup of of the liabilities if 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 i even calculate the sum of 1023 plus 3747 i'm going to get 4770 so out of 4770 1023 is the current liability and 3747 is the non current liability so now the finance cost should be 570 1023 current 3747 non current so now what entry are we going to post we are going to write finance cost debit by 570 and we are going to debit the lease obligation recorded in the trial balance by the question which was 4200 so we are actually eliminating the liability by debiting 4200 so that the liability shown in the trial balance is actually eliminated from the financial statements and then we are going to write the lease obligation current liability and the lease obligation non-current liability so the current liability is going to be 1023 and non-current liability is going to be 3747 so this is the entry that should be posted in the financial statements to record the impact of the lease are you people getting this if you have any question you can ask quickly Okay, great Fatma okay so let's move further now the question says that no depreciation has yet been charged in the plant and equipment which should be charged to cost of sales so we are going to charge depreciation to cost of sales on straight line basis over 
five year life, including the lease plant. So we are going to depreciate all of the plants over five years. No plant is more than four years old. So if we calculate the depreciation, we have already depreciated the, the asset over 3600. And even if the question is already recorded all of the plant and equipment correctly, so we can actually simply calculate the depreciation as 85,000. This value divided by five years because all of the plants are being depreciated over five years. So there is no need to, to calculate the depreciation separately for, for item one, item two and all the others. So we can simply calculate the depreciation by dividing 85,000 by, by five years. And even if you want to calculate this separately, you can also say that item one was being depreciated over by 3600. Item two, the leased asset should be depreciated as 8,000 divided by five years. And then if you want to calculate the remaining, you can calculate as 85,000 minus 18,000 minus 8,000 divided by five. And then when you calculate the sum of all these, you are going to get back onto same 17,000. So there is no need of calculating uh, in such a complex way that when when you have a uh, when you have a simple way to calculate that. So simply 85,000 divided by five years will give us the depreciation of the all of the plant and equipment. Okay, so now adjustment number two has been done completely. Let's uh, let's move on to the next adjustment. This was adjustment three. Now we'll be solving adjustment number four. In adjustment four, the question says that the investments through profit or loss are those held at 31st March 2015 after the sale below. So the values in the trial balance are actually after the sale, which is which the question is going to mention. They are carried at their fair value at 1st April 2014. So they are being carried at an old value. However, they had a fair value of 6.5 million on 31st March 2015. So let's see the value in the trial balance. What was it? Let's see the value in the trial balance. The value in the trial balance was actually 6,000. So the value is now increasing from 6,000 to 6,500. The value is increasing from 6,000 to 6,500. So we can simply write an entry as financial asset debit and investment income credit by 6500 minus 6000 so this entry should be prepared by 500 Ashna Khan is asking to show the remaining value Ashna I have calculated remaining as 85000 from the trial balance minus 18000 for item 1 because 18000 has already been depreciated Minus 8,000 for item 2 because 8,000 has, has also been already depreciated above. So out of 85,000, 18 and 8 has been depreciated. Remaining divided by 5 is going to be the depreciation of the remaining property plant equipment. Arshian, are you getting the, the how we've calculated? Okay, good. So now let's continue on to adjustment number four, Weaver. So I'm writing four over here. 
Now the question further says that during the year an investment which had a carrying amount of 1.4 million was sold for 1.6 million. So we had an investment with the value of 1.4 and we have sold it for 1.6. So we, we have made a gain of 200.2 million which is 200,000. Investment income in the trial balance above includes the profit on the sale of the investment and the dividend received during the year. So the question says that the trial balance already includes the profit on the sale of the investment. This means that the question has already recorded the sale. So we are not required to do anything in this adjustment. The question has already recorded the sale, the transaction. So this means that we should not be recording any transaction in this. So adjustment number four is now completed. Now let's move on to adjustment number five. In adjustment five, the question says that Clarion renewed an operating lease. So now operating lease has been replaced by lease exception. So this is a lease exception. Let's call this um, a low value asset because there are total two types of exception to the lease. Let me give you a brief overview. That in IFRS 16, there are two types of lease. We have normal lease accounting and we have exceptions. So the accounting that we have just followed is basically the lease accounting and the exceptions are applicable uh, in two cases. If the lease is a short term lease, short term lease means a lease relating to less than 12 months. or it is a low value asset. So in these two cases, the, 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 the normal lease accounting is not followed. Instead, we follow the lease exception. Now, what is the accounting in lease exception is the total payments should be divided by total months to get the monthly rent. So this is the monthly expense that we are going to get. And this will be recorded accordingly. So, so in lease exceptions, total payments divided by total months is going to give us the monthly expense. Are you people getting this IFRS 16? Okay, now there's a question, sir. I have a doubt that if an asset is being revalued, won't this gain appear in OCI? Yes, basically that appears in OCI if we are in IS 16 or 38. But right now in adjustment number four, we were talking about the financial asset. So if you read in the trial balance, this was investment through profit or loss. So through profit or loss means that this investment the uh, the movement in this investment should be recorded in 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 PNL. That is why we have recorded it in PNL. If the movement would have been relating to IES 16 or IES 38, in that case we would have recorded it in OCI. Or even if the the investment would have been um, at fair value through OCI, in uh, in that case even we recorded it in on, in the OCI. Abdullah is saying, sir, how would we recognize a low value asset? Abdullah, the question will, will tell you that this is a low value asset. You are not going to identify it on your own because you can never identify in the, in the exam. So the question will tell you that this is a low value asset and you your work is will, will be to apply the accounting over that rather than to, to identify whether the asset is low value or not.
Okay, now let's continue with adjustment number five. So in adjustment number five, the question says that Clarion renewed a lease. We, we, we are assuming this that uh, that this is a low value asset being leased on a, a low value property. Let's call this a low value property on 1st April 2014. So we have leased the low value property at the start of the year at day one. The operating lease payment represents an annual payment in advance of $1 million. So we are paying $1 million for one year and a lease premium of 1 million. So we are actually paying a total of 2 million. 1 million as the premium and 1 million as the advance rent. The lease is for four years and um, I'm again removing operating word. And lease expense should be included in the cost of sales. So I'm reading the question again that Clarion renewed lease on a low value property on 1st April 2014. The operating lease payment, the operating lease payments. So let's cancel this operating again and we are going to study this as lease payments. So which lease payments the question is talking about actually? Let's go to the trial balance and see which lease payment is the question talking about. So this is the lease payments that the question is talking about. So the lease payments in the trial balance is being shown as 2000. So the question is talking about this. That the lease payment represents the annual payment in advance of 1 million. So this means that the annual rent we should be paying is 1 million. And a lease premium of 1 million and we have also be we, we will we will also be paying lease premium of 1 million. So if I calculate the total for adjustment number five, I'm going to say annual lease rentals are going to be 1 million for how many years? Four years. So the total lease payment is going to be 4,000 and then we'll be paying a lease premium of 1,000. So the total payments are going to be five thousand and total years are actually four. So expense per year is going to be five thousand divided by four years. So 1250 is the expense that should be recorded in the first year. 1250 is the expense that should be recorded in year one. So now we have already paid an amount of 2000, which means that the remaining excess 750 is actually the amount we have prepaid. So what entry are we going to make in this? I'm writing adjustment number five. We're going to write cost of sales debit by 1250 lease payments credit by 2000 and prepaid rentals which will be written as a current asset debit by the difference 2000 minus 1250 which is going to be 
Okay, so now adjustment number five has been done. Let's move on to adjustment number six. In adjustment number six, the question says that a provision for current tax for the year ended 31st March 2015 of 3.5 million is required. So current tax for the current year of 3.5 million is required. So we can write the entry as tax expense debit provision for tax being credited by what amount by 3.5 million so this is the current tax to be recorded then the question further says that the balance on the current tax in the trial balance above represents the under over provision of tax liability for the year ended 31st March 2014. So the balance given in the above trial balance is basically a credit balance of 400. So what we can do is we can directly take this to the tax expense when we're when we're preparing the income statement. So no need to, to prepare any entry right now. At 31st March 2015, the tax base of Clarion's net assets was 12 million less than their carrying amounts. So let's calculate the deferred tax. Deferred tax liability brought down. Deferred tax liability carried down. And the difference is going to be for the year. So the question says that at the 31st March 20x5, the tax base of Clarion's net assets was 12 million less than their carrying amounts. So if the tax base is less, this will result in a deferred tax liability. So 12,000 into the tax rate of 25% will give us deferred tax liability carried down. This will give us deferred tax liability carried down. Now, if we go uh, onto the question and see what, what liability brought down was there. So the deferred tax liability brought down was actually 2,700. So this means that there is an increase in the liability by 300. So the entry we are going to prepare is going to be tax expense debit and deferred tax liability credit by 300. So this is the entry that we'll be recording for adjustment number six. So all of the adjustments are now done. Now we should be preparing the final income statement and the balance sheet and the statement of change and equity. And then we will be calculating the EPS and then we'll be calculating the cash flow statement. So this is a very long question and we also have to take, take a break in, in, in a while. So let's prepare the statement of comprehensive income. How do we start preparing this? We are going to start from revenue, cost of sales, gross profit. We'll be having investment income and then distribution cost. administrative expenses finance cost profit before tax tax expense profit after tax so there was no revaluation in this question so there is no need of writing the revaluation uh, OCI Sakina is saying, sir, can you please give a little bit of revision for major concepts of deferred tax? Okay, Sakina, I cannot promise, but I will try my level best. So let's start writing down, down the revenue. The revenue was 132,000. So what I can do is I can strike through this value so that I can remember that I have incorporated this in the, in, in my answer because uh, 
most of the time uh, uh, student do not know which values have been incorporated and which have not been incorporated so it's better to strike uh, to strike through these values when you are using in this exam now the question has 88 300 i'm striking through this and now i'm writing equals to minus bracket 88 300 plus now we have a lot of entries let's see finance cost loan note suspense account finance cost depreciation expense this should be written in the finance cost uh, uh, in the cost of sales and let's see if we have any other value to be written in the cost of sales apart from depreciation expense we have yes we have 1250 cost of sales so i'm going to cl close the bracket press enter so this is the value of the cost of sales that should be written let me apply the formatting to to show the negative values as bracket you can select this option in if, if you click on this icon you're going to select the sixth option so your values will automatically become with the brackets so the gross profit is going to be the sum of these two values gross profit now we are going to use the investment income the investment income given in the question was 500 strike through so equals to 500 plus we have also recorded one of the entries in the finance cost uh, in the investment income so 500 in the investment income is to be added and then we are having distribution cost of 7400 so we'll be writing minus 7400 we have administrative cost of 8000 so minus 8000 so now we know which values have been incorporated and which have not been incorporated then we have finance cost back and trust will be will be will be written in the finance cost equals to negative bracket 300 plus now we have 800 as finance cost plus we have 320 as finance cost plus we have 570 as finance cost so three different values to be written in the finance cost and if i press enter i'm going to get the answer as 1990 so now the profit before tax is going to be the sum of all these values 9060 and then in the current tax we had negative 400 plus we have tax expense in the adjustment number five 3500 plus 300 so this will give us the tax expense and finally we are going to calculate the sum to get the final profit after tax so this way we we have got the value of the final profit after tax Any questions so far? Okay, now let's see if we have forgotten anything. So let's start from the trial balance. Equity shares should not be written in the income statement, retail earning, OC, loan notes, plant, equipment, investment, inventory, bank, deferred tax, payable. All these values will be taken at the balance sheet. And yes, we have forgotten one thing, loan interest paid. This is also a part of the finance cost. So let me go back onto the finance cost and let me write plus 800 in this. So if I add 800, my finance cost will be updated, PBT will be updated and PAT will also be updated. So this is how we have actually prepared the statement of profit or loss. Now we're going to prepare the statement of changes in equity. So we are going to write share capital. We are going to write share premium. We are going to write retail earnings and then the total. There is no revaluation reserve. We'll be starting down from the broad down. We'll be adding the right issue we'll be adding the total comprehensive income and we'll be deducting the dividend from this so this will actually give us the carried down values 
So the brought down values we have already calculated. If you remember, the brought down was 25,000 for share capital. And if I simply copy and paste this, I'm going to get the share premium value as well. And if I copy and paste this, I'm going to get the right issue as well because we have already written these values over there. So retain earning brought down is going to be taken from the question. Retain earning brought down was 8600. And we have 30,000. We have taken 30,000. We have taken 5,000. So all these values have now been incorporated. So let's just let us calculate the total. Total is going to be the sum of these three values. And I can simply copy and paste this to all others so that whenever we are going to write the values, these answers will automatically be calculated. So total comprehensive income will be shown in the retain earnings column 4860. And the dividends will be deducted from the retain earnings as well. So let's go back to the question and find dividends. So dividend paid was actually 3900. So deducting 3900 from this will give us the final carrot down. Now let's calculate the sum of all these values. So we have got the total statement of changes in equity. Now let's apply the formatting so that the negative values become in the, into the brackets and the positive values are normal. So this is how we have prepared the statement of changes in equity. Okay, so now the next task is to prepare the statement of financial position. In the statement of financial position, we are going to start from the non-current assets and the first thing we're going to have is going to the property plant and equipment apart from this we have the investments which are the financial assets and then we'll be having some current assets So in current assets, we'll be having the inventory, receivables, and prepaid rentals. So let's start from the property plant equipment. We have the property plant equipment as 85,000 minus 19,000 from the question. 85,000 we have used. 19,000 we have used. Apart from this, we have actually also depreciated the assets. So I'm writing minus and let's see the amount of depreciation was 17,000. So if we deduct this, we are going to get the amount of the property plant equipment. So the property plant equipment is of 49,000. The financial asset given in the question is of 6,000. And apart from this, we had made an entry of debiting it by 500. So this will become 6,500. So uh, uh, basically the advantages of making the double entries is, is that um, we, we have a strong control that what values are to be taken where. And we know that we are, we are not going to forget these values. Now, 11,700 is the inventory. The receivables are 18,500. And for the uh, lease payments, this 2,000 actually we have, we have converted into the lease rentals being treated as a prepaid rent, if you remember this. This 750 should now be taken to the balance sheet. So it is J49. What we can do is we can even write 
equals to j49 over here so that we can get the value directly so it is not necessary to link the exact value you can even write the cell reference so now if i calculate the sum of these three values i'm going to get 30950 So now if I go, if I write the total assets over here, I'm going to write the sum of 30950 plus these two values. Comma these two values. So the total is actually 86450. Any confusion so far? Now let's continue with the equity side. In equity, we have share capital, we have share premium, we have retained earnings, and we have already calculated these values in the statement of change in equity. So 30,000, 5,000, 915. So I can cut it now. So these are the values from the balance sheet from the statement of change in equity. And then we have non-current liabilities. In the non-current liabilities, we actually have 8% loan notes. So we can write loan notes and we can write the deferred tax liability. So loan notes is equals to 20,000, the amount of loan notes minus, we had actually debited the loan notes, if, if you people remember, debit by 5,000. So the loan notes value is now going to be 15,000. Similarly, deferred tax liability, we had already calculated in the working as well. So you can directly use that value, 3,000. So these are the non-current liabilities. And apart from that, we had environmental. Provision. Which is given as 4000 in the question. Plus. We had uh, recorded a finance cost onto that. If you remember 320. So this will become 4320. And then we have lease liability, which was actually 3747 as the non-current liability. So this is K30. So what we can do is we can directly go over there and we can write equals to K30 and the value will automatically appear. So this is how we have calculated the non-current liabilities. Now the last area is going to be the current liabilities and our first three requirements will be completed. So in current liabilities, we have actually bank overdraft, we have trade tables, we have provision for tax, and we would be having uh, the lease liability current portion. So if we go, we have the bank of 1900 OD. We have we have already used deferred tax. We have used loan notes. Just to ensure that we remember at the end, the payables are 9400. Environmental provision already used lease liability already used so 9400 of the payable is going to be used now 
9400 provision for tax is going to be 3500 and lease liability is going to be current portion 1023 So this is how we have written all of the current liabilities and now let's calculate the total equity and liabilities. So equals to sum of all these values will give us the total of the credit side. So this is 86450 which means that our balance sheet has actually balanced. Are you people getting all these values? How we are actually performing these? Now let's perform the requirement part D to calculate the earnings per share. If you people remember the question also had a requirement to prepare the basic earnings per share for the year ended. So now let's calculate the earnings per share. So if you people remember the profit, the, uh, the formula for earnings per share, it is profit attributable to ordinary shareholders and we need the weighted average number of shares to calculate the basic EBS. So these are the three values that would be required and profit available to the ordinary shareholders was from the PNL, which was actually 4860. So we'll be using this to calculate the EPS. Now we actually need the weighted average number of shares. If we get both these values, we are going to get the EPS. EPS is equals to weighted average number of uh, uh, profit attributable to ordinary shareholders divided by weighted average number of shares. So right now this is giving an error because there is no value in the weighted average number of shares. Now how do we calculate the weighted average number of shares? It's pretty simple. Let's move on to the working area. And let's write it down over here. that the opening shares opening shares on 1st April 2014 were actually 25,000 and then we have made a right issue of 5,000 on which date let's go and check the date the date was 1st October 2014. So the closing value is actually 30,000. So these, this is the movement of the shares. Now we are going to allocate the months onto, it, uh, onto this and then we'll be applying the adjustment factor to get the weighted average number of shares. So if we calculate the months from 1st April till 1st October, this will become April, May, June, July, August, September. That makes it six months. So six months will be allocated to the opening and six months after the right issue. Now the adjustment factor is applied before the right issue. This means that the, that the adjustment factor should be applied over here. Now, how do we calculate the adjustment factor? Adjustment factor is calculated as there were total five sh shares, um, uh, one for five right issue it was. So this means that if a shareholder has five shares, we gave him one, now he has six. Now the market value of these five shares was previously 2.5 and we have given one new share at 1.6. So the value is going to be 2.5 into 5 and 1.6 into 1 
So the total would become as 14.1. So the theoretical X right price would be 14.1 divided by 6. So the theoretical X right price is 2.35. And the adjustment factor, the formula for adjustment factor is the market value of 2.5 divided by the theoretical X right price. So the adjustment factor is 1.06 along value. So let's make it two decimal place. So the adjustment factor would become 1.06. So we'll be applying the adjustment factor of 1.06 over here. Two decimal place. So this would become 25,000 shares into six by 12 into 1.06 or we can even write over here as equals to 6 by 12 and equals to 6 by 12 so we can simply do it like this 25,000 into 6 by 12 into the adjustment factor thirty thousand into 6 by 12 So if I calculate the sum, I'm going to get the weighted average number of shares as 28297. And if we round it off, it is 29298. So the, the, the cell is R64. I'm saying I have to leave my office. So if I close, I will be able to get this video later on. Yes, Anam, you will be able to get this later on. All of the recorded lectures will be available on the Vimeo channel of ACCA Pakistan. So uh, you can uh, uh, you can ask for the link from ACCA. Sakina is saying, can you please repeat adjustment factor working? Sakina, the adjustment factor working is that the shareholders had five shares and we have given them one new. So now they have a total of six shares. The market value of these five shares was 2.5. So their worth was 12.5. And we have given one new share of 1.6 now. So the so, so the worth of these one share is 1.6. So the worth of total six shares is 14.1. And this would become one share of 2.35. And the adjustment factor is basically the market value divided by the theoretical X right price. So this is how basically we calculate the adjustment factor. So now we will be using R64 as the weighted average number of shares so if i write equals to r64 this will be bring us the theoretical uh, the the weighted average number of shares now if we divide and we calculate the calculate the uh, basic eps we are going to get the answer as 0 0.12 dollars and if i want to write the value in cents i'm going to write in into 100 and if I write and cents, so this will actually add this value, but that is quite long. So I can write round this to two decimal place. So your answer is going to be 17.17 cents. Are you all, uh, all getting this working that we have just performed? Now the next part, the last part is actually to prepare the extracts of the cash flow statements. Do you people want a break because we have already invested a lot of time in, in this? So uh, is it OK or you people want a break? Because I am OK. I'm good enough to continue. If you people want a small break of five to seven minutes, we can um, have some refreshments, bring some water. OK, break, please. 
people are asking for break small break please elvin is also saying okay so let's have a small break and we are taking a seven to ten minutes break so it is right now 547 so we'll be we will be uh, continuing at 555 so let's have a small break and then continue at 
Okay, everyone, let's start again. So we were solving one of the questions. This was question number one by the name of Clarion. We had solved the requirement A, B, C, and D. And now we are going to solve the last requirement, which is requirement number E, to prepare extracts from the cash flows uh, for Clarion for the year ended 31st March 2015. So we are now going to prepare the cash flow statements in respect of cash flow from investing and financing activities. So we are not required to prepare the entire cash flow statement, but we will be preparing the, the, uh, the cash flow relating to investing and financing only. So now let's go and write over here about the cash flow from this requirement E extracts from the statement of cash flows and we'll be writing cash flow from investing activities and we'll be writing cash flow from financing activities so these are two areas which will be preparing now let's see what what elements were in the question which which relates to the investing or the financing activities so if I read adjustment number one, this was about issuance of shares. So issuance of shares is something which should be written in the financing activities. So issuance of ordinary shares and the amount of cash that would have been raised was something which we have written in the statement of changes in equity. So this is the cash which was raised. Okay, sorry. Can you see the screen now? Yes, Melissa, Shyam, there's some problem. There was some problem in the screen. Mm. Can you people see the screen now? Mm. Okay, good. So 8,000 is the amount of the issuance of the share capital. Let me show you again the work that I've done. So I have meanwhile written extracts from the statement of cash flows. Cash flow from investing activities, cash flow from financing activities. Just give me a second. Okay, so extracts from the cash flows, cash flow from investing, cash flow from financing activities. And as adjustment number one was relating to the issuance of share capital, so I'm going to think that whether this, this relates to investing or financing, and then I have just in, inserted it into the financing activity. So we, can, we should even apply the formatting to this so that the negative values are written in brackets and the positive values are comma separate. So adjustment number one reflected in cash flow. In adjustment number two, the question was talking about the repayment of the loan notes. So this is also one of the financing activities. So repayment of loan notes was equals to, and if you remember, we have prepared the double entry as well. So if I go on to the entries, I can find the repayment of the loan notes was actually 5,000. This one. So this is the amount of the loan that we have repaid. And as this is a cash outflow, we should be writing this as a negative 5,000. So now we are going to read the adjustments and simply post the impact into the relevant heading. So adjustment one done, adjustment number two done. Now in, in adjustment number three, the question said that we have acquired two property plan and equipments. Item number one had a cost of 14,000. So this should, this should be shown in the investing activities, purchase of property, plant and equipment. So 14,000 was the cost and we had a dismantling cost of 4 million. 
So what amount should be written over here? Should we be writing 14,000 or should we be writing 18,000? What do you people think? Should we, we, we be writing 14,000 cash outflow or 18,000? Balisa is saying 18,000. Okay, what about others? 14 or 18? 14, 14, Sakina is saying 14. Yes, we are going to write 14,000. Because the cash that we have paid is not 18. The cash we have paid is not 18. The cash that we have paid is actually uh, 14,000. So that is why we should be writing 14,000. Now, if I go on to item number two, in item number two, we have actually leased a plant. Uh, we have actually leased a plant. So, uh, what impact of lease do we have in, in the cash flow? Leased asset is not shown in the, uh, uh, in the investing activities. Instead, we show a repayment of lease liability as a financing activity. And what amount of free payment is being made as a lease liability? If I go onto the lease table to see what amounts have we repaid. This was actually our year number one. So if I want to calculate the impact of the lease uh, of the repayment. So these are the two values that have been repaid during the year. In year one, we have paid 2300 as the uh, uh, initial deposit and 930 as the repayment of the loan. So the sum of P34 and P35 should be the answer in the cash flow statements. So I'm going to write equals to P34 plus P35. And this should be a negative balance because this is a cash outflow. So 3230 is going to be the repayment of lease liability. So adjustment 1, 2 and 3 are now done completely. Now if we talk about adjustment number 4, the adjustment number 4 we have sold some of the investments. During the year an investment which had a carrying value of 1.4 was sold for 1.6. So this is also one of the investing activities. Sale of investment or sale of financial asset. Both can be written over here. Both the statements are right. Arshan is saying, can you please repeat this repayment? Arshan, in, uh, uh, in, in case of lease, actually the cash flow impact is, is the amount of the lease repayment. Repayment of the lease liability. Now, if we see, we had paid an initial deposit of 1500 and we had paid first rental of 1500. So the total payment made was actually 2300 and 1500, 3800. But out of this 3800, we also had paid the interest, which was of 570. So if you remove the 570 from this, you are going to get the repayment of 3230. This is one of the technique of, technique of calculating the repayment of lease liability that you see what amounts have been paid and deduct the interest from that. And the second option is to is to sum is to calculate the sum of the re, uh, 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 of the repayment column. So this is the repayment column. In year one, we are going to show the sum of this 2300 and 930 as the repayment. Similarly, if, if I would, would have been preparing the cash flow statement of year two, I would have shown 1023 as the repayment of liability. So, so whatever amount is being shown in the repayment, that will be shown as the repayment of lease liability in the statement of cash flows. Are you getting this point, Arshia?
Okay, so now let's get back. Now we have read adjustment number 1, 2, 3, and 4. Adjustment number 5 basically relates to uh, the, the exception of the lease. Now this exception has no concern with the financing activities. This has no concern with the financing or the investing activities. So this adjustment has none of the cash flow impacts. And in the last, we had a provision this provision even does not have a cash flow impact because this is something relating to PL in the balance sheet. So all of the adjustments have now been done. Let's view the trial balance once as well. Maybe there is something that should be shown in the investing or the financing activity. So we have equity shares, we have retail earnings, other components, loan notes, plant, accumulated depreciation. And if we go down, we are going to find dividends paid. This is also one of the financing activity. So the dividends paid should also be shown as the cash outflow. So this, the dividend paid was 3900 So now your extract to the statement of cash flows is complete. So there were four marks for all of this working. I hope the, the, the extract to the cash flows is also clear to all of you. So we have done the statement of comprehensive income. We have done the statement of financial position. We have done the, the EPS. And finally, we have done the statement of cash flows. If there is any question, you people can ask quickly. If you people have any question you can ask, then we'll continue. Okay, Abid Ali is asking that can we include dividend payment in operating activity? Abid, normally the interest is, is a disputed matter that it can be taken in, in, the invest, uh, 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 in the investing or the operating activity, but the dividend payment is normally not a disputed area. We, we normally write the dividend paid in the financing activity. So, uh, uh, so, uh, so the disputed area is based in the interest. It can be written in operating, it can be written in financing. Okay, there is some question from a user. Could you please repeat how you got the dividend paid part? Actually, the dividend paid part is given in the question. This 3900. The question has already given us the amount of the dividend paid. So we have used it directly from over there. Nuzair is saying in calculating weighted average number of shares, why opening 25,000 shares have been prorated? They are available for the whole year. Okay. Nuzair, your answer is that why we have prorated it into six months. This is because we have, uh, 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 there, are, there are two different uh, methods to calculate the weighted average number of shares. In one, what, in one, what we do, we say that 25,000 shares were there for the entire year. So 25,000 into uh, the, the, uh, 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 the 1.06 into 12 by 12. That method is also correct. There is no harm in, in uh, following that as well. So both the, the answers will give you the same, same actual answer.
Are you getting the point, Nazir? Or you want me to clear it further? Yes, there is someone whose name has not been updated. Uh, yes, in the exam, there are going to be 220 marks questions. This this one of the long question uh, uh, from the exam perspective, the, the number of the uh, 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 the number of requirements will be will actually be reduced. So, is that according to what you are saying is that we should be writing equals to 12 divided by 12 over here and equals to 6 divided by 12 over here. So that would even give the same answer. Let me show you. If I copy this, if I paste this over here. And if I write equals to 12 divided by 12 equals to 6 divided by 12, in that case, we will not be using this. And 1.06. Now, if we see, we're going to say 25,000 into this, into this, and 5,000 into this. So if now I calculate the sum, this is approximately going to be the same. But I personally prefer this option more as compared to the previous option. Arshina is saying, sir, if we find annuity factor rate, power is negative. Yes, yes, Arshina, it is negative. And I say, do you have a mock exam prepared for this session? Yes, Arshian, you are exactly right. For the mock exams, what you, what you people can do if, if you have created an account on this GoCB Global, if you go onto the courses, they are basically providing some of the free mock materials for F5, 7, 8, and 9. So if you go on to F7, you are going to find two different mock exams, mock 1 and mock 2. These, uh, uh, both of these mocks are completely free. So, uh, so the students can actually attend these mock exams as well. So the course that I have created on my own is, is this one, webinar September 2018. All of these mocks are free, F5, two mocks for F5, two mocks for F7, two mocks for F8, and two mocks for F9. So this is one of the uh, um, good materials available for the students to solve. Now we have only eight more minutes. We have only eight more minutes left. So you, uh, as the time is quite short, you people can ask your questions quickly. Uh, meanwhile, what people can do is solve these two questions on your own at your home so that uh, you can even Excel further. I'm sharing my contact number with you people so that if you people have any um, concerns regarding the webinar, you can discuss with me and I will prepare a WhatsApp group in tomorrow's session um, so, so that there, there is a, a single uh, group where, where you people all can chat with each other and, and with me as well. Fatma is saying that how can I prepare exams in the platform? Fatma, you can simply go on to website gocbglobal.com. When you click on the gocbglobal.com, yes, Alvin, we'll be creating a group, WhatsApp group. And there's an option to register. So you can go on to the option of registering, Fatma. And there you, you're going to get a form. You can simply fill that form to get the access. So as right now, I'm already logged in. That is why it has brought me to the paper page. When you're going to solve it, you're going to get the uh, new form. And one more thing, whenever you, whenever you, whenever you people are uh, done with the with solving the answer, you can click on the export button. This export button will basically download your complete answer into an Excel format. So you people can use the export option as well. I will also send the Excel file on the WhatsApp group created tomorrow. And um, after that, it, it, it will be more easier for you people. Any other questions?
how should we preparing for for the um, for the F7 exams? Basically, in in F7 exam, you you people are aware that there are three sections: section A, section B, and section C. In section C, they, they will be constructed response questions. Uh, so either have a strong grip on section C questions or have strong grip on section A and B questions. So here we have the Excel file exported. I can show you people the, the way you are going to get the Excel exported file. So this is the complete file statement of comprehensive income, statement of chain equity, financial position, earnings per share and the cash flow statement. All of the double entries are there, all of the workings are there, even the formulas that we would have used will be there. feedback about today's session and then we'll wind up. Okay, everyone, thank you for the uh, quick feedback and uh, that was all for today. Hoping to meet, meet you all of you tomorrow. Same timing, 4 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Pakistan time. Take care and Allah Hafiz.